Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> so recently, <coughs> excuse me, recently Julie, my lovely friend, um, had watched my videos and had heard me say how, how I'd love to try the Ink Tense blocks. Because I'd been playing with the pencils but these are so versatile for backgrounds and things um, that I was desperate to try them. And if you watched my, I can't remember what video it is, two or three videos back, um, this arrived while I was filming and um, was a very emotional video. And I still can't get over the fact that I've got them and that they're still sealed. Um, I've been itching to get them out. So we're going to do just that. So the ink tanks, ink, ink tents blocks come in 72, the same as the pencils. Um, let me open the tin, if I can get in it with my hands, and show you. So this is what they look like, absolutely delicious. Let me take the plastic off. I've started to rip it already, but let's get the plastic off. There we go. Oh, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. But one thing you'll notice straight off, possibly, is that they don't have the names on them. But that's not going to bother me. <laughs> I have, from my um, Ruby Charms Big Book of Colour Charts, I have photocopied one of the blank pages I've got left. And the reason I've done that is not because I don't want to do it in the book, but because I've got no room left. I've run out of spaces. Well, I've got some charts left, but um, not these nice big ones. And what I want to do is swatch these out and then match the colours and then I'm going to stick this in the lid to keep it with my blocks so that I can just pull them out and refer to it very easily. So these are what little blocks of wonder are very large and they're going to last you forever. Um, but I do believe Derwent sell a little tiny grater because you can grate these down and drop it into water and make them like that or you can just paint straight off the block with a water brush or a, a, a um, paintbrush and that's what I intend to do. So you can have a palette, so I've got a little cheap crappy palette here but it does the job, I think it was a pound from one of my like the works in the UK, one of our really cheap stores um, and you can mix the colour and check it and all the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is swatch every single colour in this 36 set on my little card and then I'll come back to you when I've matched the colours up so you know, oh excuse me, so you know where they are in the palette. All right, my beautiful friends, I will see you in a second. Okay, folks, so here are my messy swatches. And I think these are the colours that we've got. Now, I could be wrong, um, but I think these are the best match that I could make. I've picked, mixed them up pretty thick, so it was quite hard to tell. So, Sherbet Lemon, Sun Yellow, Sienna Gold, Tangerine, Poppy Red, Chili Red, Cherry, Shiraz, Red Violet, Deep Rose, Mauve, Lagoon. Well, if I come in, I'm being a lagoon. <laughs> Navy Blue, Iron Blue, Iris Blue, Bright Blue, Deep Indigo and Dark aqu Aquamarine, top row. And then um, Green Aquamarine, Mallard Green. Now that's pale because I contaminated it with white because I'm a doofus, just ignore it. <laughs> Iron Green, Ionian Green, Apple Green, Field Green, Hooker's Green. I can't work this one out at the minute. Um, I'm not sure. It could be, I don't know. And here is where I got confused because of the, the um, beautiful um, ochre colours. It's really difficult, was difficult for me to tell. So as far as I could tell, I think that these are tan, saddle brown, oak, baked earth, willow, dark chocolate, sapia, Chinese ink and ink black. 
So either way, whether I've got them wrong or not, they are a really good mix of colours. For 36 colours, we can have, you know, a really good play with those and mix colours up. So that's lovely. I'm really pleased with them. But I did mix them quite thick. So if you want a lighter colour, obviously we're going to add water or you can add white. Now what I was excited about was the white. Look, we can black out lines with that. How cool is that? And that was just like one thick coat. So if I went back over again, we could make that line disappear. So that's incredible. I'm really, really happy with those colours. Now, to test these beauties out, I have got the wonderful works from Imaginary, Imaginary Friends by Carolina Kupikowska. And um, another one of my lovely subscribers um, had said, please, could I do a colour along in these books? Because she had managed to get the whole set. So, Julie, this is for you and for that said lovely subscriber. So, the page I chose is this beautiful girl. Isn't she adorable? So this is just a plastic sheet that I got. It's on my wish list if you want to have a look. I got it from Amazon um, as an inking mat, but it is really just a thick plastic sheet. And I'm just going to put it behind. And we're ready to go. So the last time we did a colour along with ink tents, we mixed colours. So I'm going to use my pencils as well as the gorgeous colours that we've got here. And we're going to make that skin tone again. So we used crimson. So I've got to try and find it in my set. And I'm not very good at finding crimson. Then we used um, tan. Tan, and we used Sicilian yellow. Okay, so if I hold them up, oh, my desk is collapsing. No, stop it. I've got a lineup of videos that we're going to do. So the next one we're going to do is in um, the Colouring Heaven magazine with the beautiful alcohol markers that I've, I was sent. So we've got crimson, tan and Sicilian yellow. Now I'm taking my Caran d'Ache palette board, but if you don't have this uh, plastic chopping board or something with a textured surface that is not porous like paper so it won't sink in. So crimson, I need to make sure that I've mixed enough. I'd rather have too much than not enough. Crimson. Then I'm going to go over with tan. And then I'm going over with this, one of my favourite colours in the set, Sicilian yellow. And it looks like a hot mess, I know. But then I'm going to take my Derwent water brush, and I've got two here. One from a set that I was gifted with, which I keep because it's got a beautiful fine point. And another one I brought that's all frayed. But it's great for bigger spaces. So I'm just going to pump it up and get some water going. There we go. It hasn't been used for a couple of days, so just get it going. A bit more. Then we're going to mix this up, make sure I get all those little bits because they'll dissolve to more water. That looks really bright on there. Let me just, I'm just keeping adding water. But when we put it on a scrap piece of paper, let's see, you get a really nice peachy tone that might be a little bright so I'm gonna add some more water because we can always go back in am I out of water no 
got more water. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, it's better. <coughs> okay, so I am going to be really brave and I'm going in on her skin. Now these books take water beautifully. They do crinkle a little, but nothing to be too alarmed about. So I'm going to go over all of that. Then I can use my gorgeous blocks for any other colours that I feel that I want to add. So I'm going to go over all of that. And uh, ear. I always forget ears. Always. What is it? With ears. I don't know. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure that I've covered everything. She will dry lighter. But we can always go back in with some deeper colours. So I understand that Carolina um, has <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'll explain the coffin in a second. Um, it's coming out with a new book soon. So I'm going to be keeping an eye out for that. So I'm just going back over her. There we go. And like I say, she will dry lighter. But I actually quite like the depth of colour that we've got there. And if we're not happy, we can always go over with pencils because pencils work beautifully over in tents. Isn't that beautiful? Right. I need to clean my brush off. So I'm wanting beautiful earthy tones in this picture. So, we do new. Right, we're going to have, let's use some of our blocks now. Now, I am pretty certain that this is, let's have a look. If I turn it round here this way and look at my swatch chart. Whether I've got it wrong or not, I know what colours they are. I really liked this one for her shawl, which is Baked Earth. So, that is... Um, hang on. It, I have to count them up. I'm pretty certain. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it's that lightest one there. That lightest block. And I am going to take my little crappy palette <laughs> and I am going to, if you look how quickly they activate, it's amazing. Look at that. And then I'm going to drop it in here. They're very intense, as the name suggests. And I'm going to get a little bit more water and I'm going to mix that up. There we go. You don't need that much. I'm just doing a small patch, aren't I? So I will want to do her shawl underneath and I want her headdress in it as well. So I want to just... Yeah, it's a nice earthy colour, isn't it? So I'm just making sure I've got enough. And a bit of extra water from a little cup I've got next to me. Okay, I like that. And like I say, don't panic we can deepen up the tone should we need to and we might need to or add more paint so just adding some more from the block that's better so when a face is dry I can go over lighten it, change it, whatever I want to do She just screamed to me tonight. I thought I have to do her. I 
Is that part of it here? I think so. Let's go with that. Okay, the top part. I'm going to leave the little V bits a different colour. I think I'm going to add some gorgeous ready tones. Darken that up a bit and make sure so I cover it over so it doesn't not so streaky. So the cough, folks, the cough. Um, because I work in a school, um, we're testing twice a week, but then a colleague of mine got COVID. That dreaded C word. Um, I'm just going to mix a bit more. So we're testing twice a week, nothing, nothing, nothing. Friday morning, positive. Marvellous. So, um, I feel okay. I do have a bit of a headache, but, um, yeah. I'm going to come down with those tassels too. Yeah, a bit of a headache, um, but it's fairly new, obviously, only coming up Positive Friday. Um, I'm a bit scared about it all, but there we go. It all, it all, uh, It'll resolve, I'm sure. It'll be okay. So I don't have any other symptoms. Bit of a sore throat, bit of a headache. So I'm ho I've had all my vaccines and boosters. So I'm hoping that's enough. I'm just mixing up some more. Just for this little headdress here. Keep her consistent. The skin's turned out really dark, so we're going to need to do some highlights and things on her. But when we put the other bright colours around her, as well. Skin always seems to turn down, tone down when we put lots of dark colours round. So yeah, and then some of my children at school have also tested positive from the little classroom that I work with, so we're all sharing the experience together. Not great. I should be glad when it's all over and done with and we don't have to even think about it anymore. It does my head in now. <clears throat> anyway, let's not talk about the C word anymore. But yeah, so if I cough, I apologise. I've got my um, trusty glass of Diet Coke by the side of me, ready. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that actually, it's not, let's not faff. Okay. Right, is she dry? Because I'm going to have to do something with this skin. So, what I need to do is mix up. So we've got the mix we had here, and I'm going to take a ton of Sicilian yellow and I'm going to mix that in. I need to put some more water in my, my brush. So I'm going to mix up that Sicilian yellow into it and I'm also 
going to get some white from the block and I'm going to put that in. Okay, let's see on the paper. So this is our colour that we mixed originally. That's lighter, isn't it? I don't know, we'll try. So, I want some highlight around here. We'll see how that dries. If not, I'll have to go in with pencil, but that's fine. I don't mind. So we're probably going to go in with pencil anyway. So anywhere that's got a lighter, less grayed tone, we'll just plop that in and hope for the best. It's not going to spoil it. Put a little bit around there. We'll see what that dries like. Let's see what that dries like. And then we can work from there. Okay, right, I want more. Um, I need to think about the tones that I'm going to put in here. <clears throat> so I know I want red. I want red on my makeup. There. Um, I don't know. Okay, what I'm going to do is let her dry. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to let her dry as she is and think about colour tones because I've just come on, played, got all excited and now I don't have a plan. So I'm going to go off, like I say, let her dry. Paper's not crinkled at all. And then we'll come back and have a look and see what we're going to do. All right, folks, see you in a second. Okay, so the skin's dried and I'm really happy with, actually with the tone that's come out but I want to put some depth in some of the darker places so we're going to mix up some colours and what I did while I was off camera was took some little number stickers and just numbered these because I find it really hard I'm to keep counting and whatnot. So, I'm going to take what I think is tan and what I think is, no, mm, yeah, let's try this, we don't have to use it, we can just experiment, so what I think is, um, tan, which is 27, we're going to take some of that, and I'm putting it in a palette, got a little cup of water, which I tried to keep out of the way, this is over here because I'm so flaming clumsy with things. So I'm going to mix that up. And then I'm going to add a load of water to it. I'm just adding water off camera. Here we are. And then I'm going to take 31, <coughs> which I believe is willow. Which is a beautiful ready tone and I've put 30 in there because I'm an idiot 31 <laughs> oh well it won't hurt bit more 31 and then I'm going to put some water in there and then we're going to try that on a piece of so I've just got lots of water and I'm just going to try that on a scrap piece of paper. Okay, what do you think? So if we move our beautiful blocks out of the way somewhere, and then I put that here. <coughs> Let me move those out of the way for a second. Do I think that that's going to give us the depth in the dark places that I want? Shall we try, folks? Shall I be brave? Okay, so just going to drop that in. Where's my tissue? Clean my brush off, and then I'm just going to blend that edge in to what we've already done. And 
hopefully this will dry not too dark but enough to give us a bit of tone in that skin. So I'm just going to push some up here. Dry my brush off and then like pull that out. God I hope it works and she doesn't look hideous. <laughs> You've got to try these things, folks, haven't you? You've got to try. Okay, clean my brush off. And I'm just going to push that edge out. I mean, worst comes to the worst, we can always... <coughs> we can always remix some of that paler skin colour. Bit of area. So I've cleaned my brush off and then I'm just kind of going to make that blend out into that. So there's no harsh line there, just with a damp brush then. And we'll see what this gives us. Scary for me folks this is. Clean, keep cleaning my brush off in between and then I'm pushing it where I want those darker tones. So we need a little bit round here. Otherwise she's just one dimensional, isn't she? She's got no she's got no depth at all if we don't if I don't try this. And after all, this is what I've been crying for these ink tense blocks for for such a long time. Is to do this very thing with them. So we're gonna try. I'm gonna take a really dark piece, drop it in there. Got to do round her other eye. I think I could have, have actually afforded to have gone even darker, but I'm not going to. You have to learn to quit while you're ahead <laughs> in Lucy's world. Okay, it's looking good. Deepen this piece up here. Soften that edge out. Okay. Right, let's leave that and see what happens. So I'm going to leave that on my palette. Now, I want a red tone. And I like the chilli red. I like the poppy red. I like those two. I like cherry. If, it, if that is cherry. So, because I want like colours that have been made naturally, um, colours that you could make natural colours, you know? So I'm thinking, um, I'm not, I don't want these green, so I'm thinking I might let's get that poppy red right so poppy red I've got as number five so we're gonna do that just get my little brush and my palette and we're gonna get some of that going Ooh, look at that beautiful color Okay, I'm going to put water in it, and then I'm going to use my Derwent, fine Derwent brush. So, I've got my little palette here, mixed up on my really fine, beautiful brush. And I'm going to put, oh I'm scared. 
Come on, Lucy. Oh, we definitely need more colour in that. Oh, need a bit of tissue. Quick, quick tissue. It's very wet. I need more colour. More red, folks. More red. It's because I put a lot of water in it. Ooh. So pretty. Okay, look at that. <laughs> right, make sure I haven't got too much water running through my brush. And we'll try again. There we go. Well, that's better. So this is just our first coat. I'm not trusting myself. That's a pretty colour. I'll have to go over those again because that was wet when I already put that down. And then I'll have to think about hair colour and So I think what I'm probably going to do is, when I've done the um, ink tense colour that I want, is maybe go in with pencil. I think I'm going to have to. <clears throat> I like the red. I really like the red against that. Oh, I'm concentrating folks, I'm very quiet, I do apologise. I don't know whether it's because I'm feeling a little rough. <laughs> um, or just nerves. I think it's probably nerves to be honest because I want to do A, the book justice but um, also the paints, the inks. Okay, we've got some more down here, so we'll fill those in while we're on a roll with that colour. It's drying quite quite nice and light so we can put other layers in. That, how did that tone, how is that tone? It's dry. So it didn't come out as dark as, as, dark as I'd hoped, but never mind. And the beauty of the ink tents is that we could go back over that if we wanted to. We absolutely could and it would, they don't move. Not like watercolours. <clears throat> A few little ones down here. Okay, so we've got some red leaves. I need to clean my brush off. Okay. What do we think, people? Right, I'm thinking I want red for those little stripes as well. So, on her face. So I'm going to put some of that in. Very carefully. We 
take it out. I'm shaking my usual shaky hands. Be brave, Lucy, be brave. Come on, this is what I tell you all. Be brave, try your supplies. Okay, she can have some on her lips too. That might lift her face a bit. Red lips, red paint. What next? Now, <clears throat> I think. Um, mm, 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 let's have a look. I think. Hmm. Some. Moves and blues. What about that? For the uh, feathers in her headdress. That would go where. Oh, I've missed a load of reds, look. <laughs> oh, oh, that's the frayed. Oh, my goodness, I'm having a nightmare. Alright, so we've got a lot of reds here. So I'm thinking, yeah. Blues and lilacs, or blues and purples, for the beads, maybe, and the feathers. Or, I don't want it to be too browns. I don't want it to be, the page should be too brown. But I did want it like really sort of natural earth tones. <clears throat> Some lovely like sketchy ones here. trouble I'm having is the shakes so so annoying see how bad it is today <laughs> okay any more yeah we've got a few over this side could you see all that oh dear me so we've got ochres like here that's a nice sort of ochre colour got red which is a lovely earth tone earthy tone well warm tone I really like that we're gonna put some obviously gonna put some definition in which I'll have to do with pencil I'm just too shaky to get fine detail in with my paintbrush but that's that's good. There we go. Another one here. Then we can sort of really deepen this beautiful red up. 
Now if you're not shaky you could use that lovely dark um, is it chili red or even dare uh, drop some Shiraz in there would be nice. Let's just bring that all up together. Okie dokie. Right. I'm stalling folks because I'm nervous. <sighs> right, I'm going to let that dry. Then I might come in and do some pencil and lift that face work up before we do any more painting. All right, folks, see you in a sec. Okay, now she's dry, I'm going to bring in some Prismas to do the skin. And I want just want some more definition in there. So I've got Peach 939. And, well, where shall I try? I'm going to put it here. Round her nose on the lighter bits that I wanted. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Okay, where else have we got a little bit? Around her lips here. I went over there, so I'm just taking that peach and going over it. There we go. A bit more around here. Okay, then I've got um, henna, which is 10:30. Oh, just checking. 10:31 henna. So I'm just going to put a little bit in here and see what happens. And this is why I love ink tents because you can layer over them, you can put pencils over them, put other watercolours over them once they're dry. I just need to, she needs more something, oh, I'm not sure. Because like I said, darn stupid shaky hands. Right, and then over that I'm going to take Nectar, which is 1092 stops me, yeah, the shaky hand stops me being able to paint fine detail like I'd like to. Um, but the fun of mixing colours and playing is what I enjoy. So I'm going to use that nectar and come down. And I'm not getting rid of all the beautiful um, ink tense colours. I'm using this just to enhance them. So I get more of that pink tone where I want it. Okay, I want a bit back to peach. Light peach. This is light peach, believe it or not. Light peach, which is 927. Put some of that in. That's good. That really lifts up. There we go. Can you see how well they work over the ink tents? Isn't that cool? Okay, so nectar down here. Sorry, henna. Where she's darkest. I 
then nectar. Just a little bit. Not pressing hard. Then peach. And then light peach. A little bit of light peach on that eyebrow. Okay, that's better. I'm happier now with that. Right, the, the leaves that we've just done. I've got three prismas and I'm going to add into that mix. Where is it? Aha, it's hiding. I'm going to add into that mix white, just in case. So I've got white, mahogany red, um, what is that? I can't see. Permanent red and pale vermilion. And we're going to use this to add some depth and definition to these leaves. So I'm taking mahogany red and I'm going to put that at the base of that leaf and at the side. Then in with permanent red. Then the pale vermilion. And then I'm just going to sharpen my white. I'm sorry, we'll come in a bit closer. Let's come in a bit closer. And then I'm going to add... Oh, well, that didn't like that. And it didn't even press the page. Okay. And then just add a, a lighter touch that side. I like that, okay. I was getting panicky, folks. So, in with mahogany, then with permanent red, this is doing what I would love to have been able to have done with the paintbrush, but I just, I can't. And then white. Look how that white works over those prismas. Isn't that cool? Over those ink tents. Right. Mahogany. Permanent red. Oh, that's good fun. And pale vermilion. Yeah, pale vermilion. And then I'm just putting a touch of white down that side. I don't know why, it just am. Looks nice. Just a bit of interest. We do this one. So I'm going to come up this side darker this time. Yeah, and this is why I love ink tents. Because just the depth of colour you can get with them. Oh, it's just amazing. And then we can do the background, if I stop waffling, <laughs> there we go. We'll just finish this bunch of leaves together, um, so we do that, a bit more there, and then just a tiny bit of white down that side. I really like that. Also, if your page is a bit crinkly and you go over with paper, uh, pencils over the top, it helps to smooth the page out. And a little white down that edge. Look at that. Love it. That's better. Okay, now we can do the same with these colours for her beautiful um, face stripes. Her, her face paint. So I'm taking the mahogany and coming down the bottom half. Coming down there. Then we're going to take the permanent red. Blend that in. 
I'm just doing it really lightly. It's only just filling in any gaps from that um, from the ink tents. And it just really gives you that bold look with very little effort at all. Mahogany red. We'll do our lips the same. Pale vermilion. There we go. Right. Lips. Okay. So, really want to define that. With the mahogany red. There we go. Then we're going to go in with the permanent red and then pale vermilion. And then this bottom lip, I'm actually going to bring that out a little further. There we go. She had a bit of a wonky smile there. And I'm sure that was down to me with my paintbrush. There we are. Better. Yeah, that's much better. There we go. <clears throat> Bit of white. There we go. That's better, isn't it? I like that. Okay. Right, what's next, folks? So we'll do all the leaves like that with those prismas. Now, I need to choose the next ink tense colour. Right, I'm feeling more relaxed now, can you tell? Gosh, I was panicking for a bit, because I thought, oh no, this is awful. I think, because the leaves are red, I think we're going to go in with that... Um, Mallard green. Now this has got white over it, don't forget, so it's a much brighter colour. So I'm going to take it from the block and I've got it as number 20. So this gorgeous, if you could see, would help. This gorgeous one. So I'm going to get my brush ready. Oops, that wasn't a pencil or anything important. I know people panic. I hate it on a drop pencil, it drives me nuts. Right, um, this number 20, let's go with this beautiful green. Oh, isn't that lovely? Oh, beautiful. I'm going to get enough of that on there, and then I'm going to put water in with it. Let's add in some water, make sure we've got enough. Just literally stroke the, the blocks and then there's colour. It's a bit like the pencils, really, I suppose. All right, beautiful mallard green. Let's move my blocks. Okay, now I'm going to take a fine paintbrush, if I can find one. Oh, they're all rubbish. So I'm going to use my... Um, I am going to use my Derwent brush. Okay, are we ready? So I want to do these stripes in this green. So we'll see what happens. Don't let me down, hands. There we go. Almost reverse of the leaves. I like that. And then I will go in with pencils to do some shading. And I might go over that again when that's dry just to deepen up that beautiful colour because it is a gorgeous colour. I'm pretty certain that's mallard green. It 
they give a really good mix of colours in with this um, 36 selection. I'm really happy with them. Okay. All right, and then we're going to do the stripe on her shawl. This is the trouble with um, when you've mixed the blocks up and you're using a water brush, it's going to continue to dilute them, which can be um, great, but it also, if you want that consistent colour, it can be quite a pain. But I love these brushes. And because they're chunky and my hands the way they are, it makes it so easy to paint with them. I don't know about a background colour yet, but I want to do a background with the paints, with the, um, sorry, the blocks. Yeah, that's so good. Right, so we need to bring some of that green in somewhere else. Where else could we bring it in? What about some of these beads? Not all of them, but some of them. Okay. I'll have one there. Um, one here. Oh, we can always. Why I'm trying to do that, I don't know. Because we can always go over with white gel pen. Uh, one there. So I'm like missing two out. I don't know what other colours I'm going to put in there yet, but I'm missing two out. Um, I have one in the centre there. Can you see that? No. And then we'll do these ones too. So I have a green one there. I'm just random, randomly dropping it in. I don't know what other colours we're going to have. I'm going to have it at the tip of that feather. And we're going to have it here. I'll we'll have one there. This one. Go back over, just deepen it up. Lovely. Really beautiful colour. Yeah, I really like that. Okay. So we've got hair hair that I need to do and what are we going to do that cut what are we going to do our hair in what have we got so I don't want it too close to those um, I quite like the willow have we used that 31 we have but we mixed it didn't we should we try willow Right, where's my gorgeous hit there? Should we try Willow? Okay, 31. Let's get a ton of that. That is a beautiful colour. Let's put some water in there. So that way it's not too dark and I can mess with it. Let me just see what that looks like. Have I got a scrap? There it is. So, there. That's a really pretty brown. Yeah, let's go with that. And then we can put some highlights in with pencil. So that'll look really cool, I think. Well, let's try a streak. Let's try a streak down here. And as long as I can see those highlights in underneath, then we can add different colours with pencil in it. I mean, you don't even need to because um, Caroline has done all the work, but I want to. I like, you know, we can put 
I don't know, playing and we can put different colour in there. We don't have to do too much, look at that, I mean it's already, we're already getting that gorgeous different tones in there. Actually I don't even know if we'll need to. I've missed a red. Let me put that in quick. Mr. Red Leaf. So I don't even know if we need to add anything to this because it's it looks lovely colour. Look at that. Like I said, I wanted warm colours. So I've stuck that green in, which is going to lift the page. Give us a bit of brightness, isn't it? Move us down. Okay. We'll see. You don't know. I need a bit more water. Just mixed up what was in my palette. I feel much more relaxed now, folks. I was really panicking that I'd fluffed this picture up, and I so love it. And there's enough of a difference between her shawl and her hair, which is nice. And there's more red there that I haven't put in. That's cool. Oh, I really like that. Got a little patch here that we haven't that I haven't done. But I think I'll definitely go in with pencil as well because the difference putting a little bit of pencil just over the top makes is is outstanding you know that it really lifts really changes the, the page okay right let me come out okay I am gonna let that dry then I'm gonna come back <clears throat> with the pencils to do those colors that we've done I'll finish the red where I need to put it in and um, the pencils that we need to match the shawl, her hair, and blah de blah. <laughs> and I will be back in a sec. Okay, folks, so here's how she's looking now with a little bit of pencil work on her. I haven't touched her hair. All I've done is what I said was just do those, those leaves bits. Right, we are going to. I have made an executive decision. Right bring in the blocks. I'm going to use the iris blue for the pale part of the leaves and the tip is going to be purple. I'm doing it. I'm not backtracking again. <laughs> I have a terrible habit of that. And I just think the cool colour with those lovely warms and we're going to do a warm background is just going to be gorgeous. The cool of the blue, then the purple, putting some water in there, just making sure it's not going to be too bright. Now, can I go in with this brush? A bit more water. Okay. All right. Oh, it's so scary. Now, any detailing I will do with pencil, like I've done with the rest, for the same reasons, shaky, silly hands. Such a gorgeous colour. So pretty. And then I'm going to have a nice, warm background. Okay, so that's iris blue adds a bit of shock of colour doesn't it and I've got the pencil colours ready for hair the green
concentrating. Okay, I need probably a little bit more water. Just going to pull that out with a bit of water so it's not so bright. There we go. Okay, we need to do the ones in our headdress. They're going to be the same. So I'm going to put a bit more water in that just so it's not so bright. Or so dark, rather. Yeah, that's better. Gosh, they go a, 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 an incredibly long way. Really good value for money. Does anybody else get scared when they're colouring in a lovely book that you're going to fluff it up? If you're still with me, and I haven't bored you to tears because I've, I've not been the chattiest tonight, have I? Okay, I like that. Right, now we're going to go in with... Oh, what colour am I going to use? Do I use... Red violet or mauve. Red violet, which is nine, number nine. So, this one. Red violet. Definitely. Right, I'm going to put them next to me. The last thing I need is a massive mishap over the middle of my page. Okay, what did we say? Nine. Red violet, nine, yeah. Right, let's go for it. In my palette. Oh, that's beautiful. Make sure I've got enough in there. Alright, let's add some water. My water's over this over the other side of my desk, folks. Because the last time I um had a massive mishap, I had the new um Luna book by Maria Troll. And um I had some black acrylic that I was doing a background or something, I can't remember now, but I managed to spill it all over the front of my book and had to do a rescue job. So now I try to keep my water well out of the way of my books. I think that's going to look really cool when we add pencil detail over this. It's going to look lush. Might need a bit more of that colour. I'll just put a little bit more in there. A bit too watery. Okay, that's better. I'll show you. I'll get the book and show you. Let me get it and show you what happens when I don't concentrate. Where is she? Luna, here you are. Look, gorgeous book. Absolutely fell in love with it. Was doing the nameplate. Was it the nameplate page? No, I spilt it all over the nameplate page. Hang on. So the nameplate page is now non-existent and I had to stick those two together and then cut her out because I'd coloured her and do a um, botch job with some tape. It turned out quite nicely but in the end but I'm missing the nameplate page which is why I try to keep my water well out the way of the image. Okay let's push out a little bit there we go. All right so I now I'm chopping backwards and forwards a little bit folks with this image but that's the nature of when you're painting you've got to let things dry so I am now going to take that purple and we're going to drop that in to these these beads yeah so that's why I'm cautious stupid brush that I'm using Right, let's change that. Go back to my Derwent. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You're like a million miles away. Right. Back in with the purple. I have a purple at the top. I 
I must get some fine brushes that aren't water brushes. In fact, let me try that. I've got some rubbishy ones, but they're, they're a bit um, a bit frayed and knackered now. Rich Richmond brushes. These were from Amazon, but let's just give that a go. So I don't want to lose the richness of the colour that we've mixed up. There. Okay, we'll have a purple one here. They're all right actually, it's not too bad. Right. Purple. Purple. <laughs> and then we'll do the other ones blue. Okay, and I've stuck my finger in the green. <laughs> this is. <laughs> I am a liability. Now I'm going to have a green stained thumb for goodness knows how long. Oh. Right. Beads. So we're going to drop that blue in. So she's got a little bit of each of these colours on her beads. Not entirely happy with that, but it's too late now. Let's go with the flow. And once it's all got pencil and things over it, it uh, it will be fine. There we are. <laughs> Step away from the water, Lucy. Oh, right. Again, folks. Right, we'll come out. I'm just making sure my hands are clean. We'll come out. This is how far we've got. I think she's gorgeous. And we don't even have a background yet. Ooh, we could drop some of that blue in her eye. Yeah. Gotta do her eyes. We could have... Yeah, okay. I need a little bit more of a intense colour. Okay, so we're going to drop that. Some of that in there. Then we could use a little bit, a little bit of that mallard green that I've just stuck my thumb in. That mallard green. Okay, just a little bit. I'm just dotting it in there. Concentrating. There. And we'll go in with pencil, obviously. And we'll really intensify that. There we go. All right, now I think, folks, you couldn't even see that, could you? I've just dropped those colours in. I'm sorry it wasn't close enough. So I'm going to have to let her dry, give her a few seconds and we'll come back and we will put the pencil on, get all the pencil work done and then we will um, look at the background and then we've created, she's quite wrinkly look but when we get the pencil and that on there she will, <sighs> she will sort out, she will. All right my lovely friend, see you in a sec. Okay folks, we're so nearly there. I've practiced and done this uh, feather and I've matched up some of the colours. So let's come in and have a look at what 
I've done. I did a little bit of a hair this side as well. So I know what I'm doing and we're not faffing about. So for her shawl, you'll have to excuse my prismas. They are <laughs> very stubby. So I've got um, light umber, I think that is, 941. This is goldenrod, 1034. And mineral orange. 1033. Now, if we go in with, let's come in a bit closer. If we go in with mineral orange, 1033, and go in in our dark places and flick that in. Remember, I'm not um, colouring over all of the ink tents that we've put down, I'm just enhancing it. So then I'm taking goldenrod, I'm going to blend that in, I can fill in any uneven splotches. Okay, then we're going to take our light umber and flick that in those dark spots. Okay, so we can do round that little tassel. We're going to do the same on the tassel. So goldenrod. And no, sorry, that wasn't goldenrod, was it? It was mineral orange, then some goldenrod. Then we're going to flick in our light umber. So I'm going to follow as much as I can. Carolina's lines. Let's do this one together. So, mineral orange. Then our golden rod. And then the light umber. And what a difference that makes, just that little bit of um, blending and smoothing with the prismas, I think makes a world of difference. There we go, then our light umber. everything just do the tassel okay deepen that up a little bit okay so that's how I'm going to colour over a shawl then we're going to look at the stripes on a shawl and I've got these three colours. So we've got peacock green, parrot green and light green. Okay, so I'm going to use the peacock green and I'm going on the underneath here. I'm going to go on the underneath part of the zigzag. So we can really define that zigzag. Just bring it up slightly. Then we're going to go in with parrot green and blend that in. Blend those two colours together. And then our light green. This is unusual for me. I never use these colours. But what a pretty combination that is. Maybe I will use it more now. That's a lovely combination. Okay, and just 
just that little bit look really brings out those beautiful intense colours smooths your page out no effort whatsoever there we go look at that more of that um, middle tone there there we go so that's those colours I'm just trying to show you quickly so the headdress will be the same as the shawl um, so that we're not spending too long right let's um, let's have a look at this feather because I can't get in you'll have to come with me folks okay so let's have a look at this feather so I've got <coughs> three colours again I have got if I can line them up sorry about the blurriness there I've got Indian Throne Blue Light Cerulean Blue and a little bit of Powder Blue alright so I'm going to take the Light Cerulean Blue and I'm flicking that in And all that's doing is filling any e, <coughs> excuse me, filling in any streaky gaps. And nothing more really. Then our beautiful Indian Throne Blue. And I'm going to do the same with that, but I'm going to be a bit more cautious with it because it's dark. We're going to get our nice centerpiece there. I'm just flicking those streaks in. I'm not fussed if it goes over the edge. Okay, then I am going to streak in a little bit of powder blue. Not much. Okay. and then the same on this side take our Indian Throne Blue <coughs> excuse me I think it is beginning to catch up with me folks I've, sp I've spent hours doing this I'm loving it, loving every second but I do think, you know, I've taken paracetamol and stuff oh, I just, I don't want it it can just do one <laughs> <clears throat> and then the powder blue. There we go. And then for the purples. Oops, sorry about that. Um, I have got. Um, oh, yeah, missed this one off. This tiny little stubby one. Um, I've got dark purple. Palmer Violet, and this little stubby thing is Grade Lavender. Okay, so I'm going to streak in Grade Lavender before I do anything else. Not that it's hardly visible, but okay, then I'm going in with Palmer Violet. We're going to streak a bit of that in. So I'm just flicking it in. Okay, and then in with our dark purple. That will give us our centre line. And then we can streak a few bits of that in. Okay, so back in with our um, Indian Throne Blue and you can see these dark patches that Carolina's put in on her feathers I'm going to fill those in with Indian Throne Blue I'll just put another couple in and then the same at this top little bit a little bit of the dark purple there so that's how they're going to be. Let's look at her eyes. Now, let's come in 
closed, they're just for this little bit. Right, okay. Now, around the edge of them, I'm taking the Indian Throne Blue. And I'm going to really darken up that edge. And just make it sort of jaggedy. Smooth on the on the edge line, obviously. Well, not obviously, but and then jaggedy. Let's put that purple down before I streak that in. And then I'm going to take that um, light cerulean blue. We're going to streak that in. Then we are going to take black, if I can find one. Aha, another stubby one. Black, 935. And we're going to, I'm going to colour right over that pupil. And here. Bring out that, really bring out that. Her eyelashes. There. Then, where's that henna gone? Oh, nectar. I'm going to use a little bit of nectar. Drop that in the corner there. Of her eye. There we go. Let's go back over that black. Tone that down. There. I like that. And we're going to do the same on the other eye. So, Indian Throne Blue. Because we'd already got that lovely green in there. Do a nice round edge. Some little jaggedy bits in there. Plop them in. And then our light cerulean blue. Plop that in. Now that will tone down the end of the throne blue so we have to go back with it. Just to put that detail in a bit more. Then our black for her pupil. There we go. We will put um We will put white gel pen. Okay. I don't like that eye there. I'm just going to erase that. I've put too much black in there, folks. Too much black. <laughs> That's better. On this bit here. There we go. And we're going to be a little bit more delicate around there. There we go. Just a whisper of of bottom lashes. Gentle, gentle. Okay, let's look for a um, very pale grey. I want... That'll do. Mm. We'll have 10% warm grey. There we go. And we're just going to put a little bit of that in her eye. There. And then some white. Just going to sharpen that, and then we'll look at her hair. Should help to bring that eye colour out even more. Okay, then I want a little tiny dot, jelly roll. <laughs> she wants a little tiny dot. There we go. 
Okay. Right, hair. Can move out slightly for this. So I've done this side and really used to my advantage actually the colours that um, the grey that Caroline has got on the page. And there we go. Right. Um, and the, obviously the ink tents that we put down. So I chose Dark Umber. This is burnt. Hang on, hang on, hang on, folks. This is burnt ochre. Yeah, 934. Burnt ochre and putty beige. Oh, I'm so sorry. They're awful state. There you go. So, with the dark umber, we're going to pick out re those really dark spots. So... Again, I'm just streaking that in. We're going to do our eyebrows the same. Come around that headband. Okay. I'm just streaking that in. So we've got the dark, the grey that, um, or the blacky colour that already existed, which will give us tone. And then I'm flicking in this beautiful dark umber. Then we're going to take this, what did I say it was? Um, burnt ochre. We're going to flick that in. needs to come down there. I'll just gently bring that out. There we go. We might need a tiny touch of black on that edge there. Just to match. There we go. That's fine. And then the putty beige, we can put in the very lightest bits and just streak some of that in for even more interest. Alright, so we'll do a plait down here. So just following the dark bits, that's all it is leaving some of that um, original ink from Carolina showing and with our ink tense colour and then literally just throwing in those streaks of colour couldn't be easier I got a bit heavy handed with the putty there There we go. There we are. Hot folks, I'm hot. So again, the dark umber and all those dark, dark spots you can't see. Let me come out slightly. So all around those red leaves, make that really dark in there. And then just flick it out. Then take the burnt colour, <laughs> I can't remember what it was, and flick that in too. And then a tiny, some tiny streaks of that putty beige. There we go. So that's how I'm going to do finish our hair. 
what have I got left to show you? Um, I think that's it. We've done the, the... Let me have a look. Let's have a look at these. Did we look at the beads? Uh, we've done up the same co combination, so Indian Throne Blue and Light Cerulean Blue. I'm going to go dark on the bottom section. Then add that Cerulean Blue. I've got a bit heavy handed that, so I can put in the um, Powder Blue. There we go, and the greens are the same. So the peacock green. And parrot green. And then light green. There we are. I think that's everything, folks. Right, I'm going to go off and finish all of that. Then we're going to come back and we'll do the background together. Let's come out and have a look at her. Because I know the video is going to be really long. She's looking really good. I'm really pleased with how she's turning out. Alright, I'll see you in a second. Okay folks, here she is. I've finished the colouring. And I want to put a background in. And I want to use the ink tense blocks to do this. Now I'm thinking dark green coming out and getting lighter. We'll see. So I'm going to move my book for a minute. We're going to bring, bring back in our beautiful blocks and my crappy little plastic thing. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, I am going to risk it and bring my water over, which is greeny blue, so that's fine. Now, I think I want... Um, 25, I think I'm going to go with 25, which is what I think is hooker's green, and I want a ton of that, so I want to make sure we've got enough. Aren't they cool? I just like the fact that, you know, I know someone's going to say, well, they're just like watercolours. Well, they're not, because they're permanent. Just want to make sure I've got enough of that. I don't want to run out halfway through. Okay, so I want that hooker's green. That's cool. And then I want a dark one, which I think... I think... The... Mm, 22, which I think is the Ionian green. So I'm just going to, we're going to put that in a separate bit, make sure I've got enough. Now this will be for the dark spaces around her. we can come out and get lighter if I want to okay scary stuff people scary stuff but I'm not going to paint like straight painting I'm moving my water out of the way so I'm not such a liability I am just going to stipple because this effect I did um, in the other what were we doing the other colour along I did and it worked just so well so like round here these parts are dark and then she's going to get lighter, I think. So we're going to come in slightly. Okay, so I'm taking that um, Ionian green. God, I hope this works. It scares me so much. All right. And I'm not going to straight paint. I'm going to stipple it in. Just being really careful around all those little parts. So we kind of get some texture. Okay, and in here where it's dark. And the beauty of this obviously is we can go in and re-deepen it up. 
I really like the texture this gives. And again, we've got a nat uh, natural colours, if that makes any sense, like nature colours. New, um, I don't know what I'm saying. But I think it'll bring her out. Of course you don't have to do this, you could do a nice bright background, but I wanted it to look sort of earthy. It will dry lighter. But the only colour that I hadn't really used was just this tiny bit of green. So I thought it might be quite nice just to incorporate this. So I'm not going all the way up here with this. I'll go over that feather thing. I'm just going to come out maybe to around here. And I'm just stippling it on just so we get that texture instead of a smooth background, which I think looks really cool. And then we can really pull that out down here so it gets lighter then we can blend that other colour in okay so I'm going to use up my dark we're going to bring it up here I need a bit more water it's drying up just keep it going We'll bring it up to match the other side. <coughs> so we're kind of up to about here. And I don't know why not smooth, but I just like the look of it. Almost like she's got woodland or, you know, just nature behind her. See, I already like that. I don't know what you think, but I think they're sort of olivey colours. And it gives me artistic flair, <laughs> where I don't have any. So just kind of bring that down. I'm just going to put some more water in, in the mix. So it's even lighter and then we're just going to try really carefully to dot some of that in there and it's going to get lighter as we go so then we can blend that other colour in that I've chosen. Just push it off the, that wax, there we go. That'll do. And then I just want to do this side. Oh, I'm so sorry. So I'm just doing this side and I just really watered it down now. And I'm going to use the splatters that Caroline has given us as a guide. So I'm just giving like that. That's it. Okay, right, back down at the bottom. Meanwhile, back down at the bottom of the picture, we've got that beautiful hooker's green, which is quite watered down. Okay, and we're going to do the same here. So we're going to stipple this colour in. So I might need to come back in with that hooker's green and do a uh, I actually need a bit more, I've watered that down too much. I'll just put a bit more of that paint in. Um, do a bit more of a lighter version of the iron green, the Ionian green, just to um, blend that in. But 
Carolina has kind of got sketch marks that she's rubbed out. So I'm just going up to that part and then I'll stop with that green. So I'm just literally dabbling it, just dabbing it on the page. But it gives a really cool effect. I was trying it with um, acrylic paint and it works really well with that too. Because I like the texture that it gives. I've done smooth acrylic backgrounds and smooth um, small ink tense backgrounds. But I just really liked this for this sort of natural feel. Anyway, I'll stop waffling. I'm, I'm wittering on. So I had a few more amazing gifts. Um, a couple from Kevin, which, yeah, just blew me away. So I'm so excited. I'm very spoiled, aren't I? Okay, so I'm going straight in with this um, hooker's green around her. I'm just going to splodge that on all over. I'm, I know that's a, um, oh, let me come out, I keep losing you, I'm sorry. I know it's another long video, but the process, um, I've, I could have split it into two, but I got carried away. So if you wanted we could put some yellow on that edge but I think there is such a thing as overdoing her. I might just sort of round that off a bit. I mean, we could put a tiny bit of yellow in, but just to sort of finish that fade out blend, but I don't think I'm going to. Do a little bit in here. I'm going to do a tiny bit round here. Her. We could do some yellow, you know. Right down at the bottom here, I just want to round this off a bit so it's more of an oval than. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take the dark green that we had. I'm going to get a little bit more of it. Um, what was it? 20, yeah, Ionian green. Just going to get a little bit more. So lots and lots of water in there. Just so it's quite diluted. And then just stipple this out. Just so there's no harsh line there. Bit too much of a harsh line. And then just watch that disappear, which is really cool. just drop some of the darker in around her up here too a bit more interest uh, 
Okay. What I'm going to do is leave Carolina's black splatters, what you can see of them that's left, I'm going to leave them alone so they add to that background feature. A bit more of this watery. There we go. I'm just using it what's on my palette. So it's not so much of a, I'm not wasting it. Okay, I'm really pleased with that. All right, folks, let's come out. So that's how she looks at the moment while she's wet. So give me two seconds. I will dry her off and we'll come back and we'll have a look and see whether we feel that we need any more embellishments or anything else put on the page. I'll see you in a sec. Okay folks, there she is, all finished. I've put some little tiny ball dot clips on there because that will help to reflatten the page because I did wet it quite a lot when I did the background. Um, but it will flatten out. I've painted in here in this book before, this one, and this was really crinkly when I'd first done it. And as you can see, as you can see, once the page, once the book is shut and squished under other books, it will lay perfectly flat. I'm thrilled with how she's turned out. And Julie, I am thrilled with the ink tents blocks. Thank you so much. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I know I haven't been the best company because of not feeling feeling great, but um, I've loved every minute of it. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you if you've stuck with me for this length of time. The next video we do is going to be with the um, Colouring Heaven magazine from Mystic Art Mirrors. I can't wait. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Well, I hope you like her. I'm really pleased with how she's turned out. There was a panic moment in there, but I'm thrilled with how she's turned out. So thank you so much for sticking with me. Thank you, Julie, for your beautiful, thoughtful gift. It was the kindest thing ever. Um, so I'll let you go and until we meet in the next few days um, for our next colour along, take really good care of yourselves folks. Night night.